Family Theater presents Stephen McNally and Billy Burke. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents the fourth act, starring Stephen McNally. And now, here is your hostess, Billy Burke. Thank you, Tony Lofrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become as important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Fourth Act. Starring Stephen McNally as Genesius. In the year 300, the capital of the known world was Rome. Outwardly, it gave no sign of the decadence that would finally crumble its empire. It boasted an invincible army, a tradition of law, and a flourishing culture. The emperor himself subsidized its theater. Never have I seen such a performance. I'm sorry, Genesis. You're sorry. That's not enough. You didn't even come till the play had begun. Then you'd do your part in a drunken stupor. And you say you're sorry. What else can I say? I hope I never have to see another performance like that one. (sighs) It won't happen again. I'll see to that. No, I'll see to it. May I go now? You'd better go before I forget myself. I... I really am sorry, Oh, Jesus. go home, sleep it off. And tomorrow night be sober. You gave her quite a time. Well, she earned it. Let me see now. I'd better take home some of these plays and study them. There's got to be one here that doesn't put the audience to sleep. You know why she did it? Did what? Oh, you mean why she came in here drunk? No. They arrested her husband today. Her husband? Why? Found out he was a Christian. Oh, I... But if I'd known that, I... I wonder if I could catch up with her. I doubt it. She'll probably be better off without him anyway. Why do you say that? (laughs) A Christian. Must be something wrong with him. Well, maybe so. All the same, I wish I hadn't given her the tongue lashing I did. I was just looking for someone to blame, I suppose. The play, you mean? The plays we have to act are trash. They're so bad it makes me ashamed to be an actor. You mark my words. One day, Diocletian will come and see how we spend his money. And then? Then we will play one farewell performance, you and I, to the lions in the Colosseum. I've heard there's no room in the prisons for common criminals. Oh? They are filled to overflowing with these Christians. Are you nearly finished? Nearly. I don't see why you don't take all the scrolls with you. No, just the ones I want to study. I... I think this does it. I'll carry some. Thank you. You, uh, go to the games, Calextus? Only because it's expected of me. And my wife likes them. Why don't you join us the next time? Oh, no, no. We should, you know. A public figure like the great Genesius should be seen at the games. Christians or no, I have no wish to see citizens of Rome come to such an end. It... It's usually lions, isn't it? Usually. They've tried matching them against each other, and that was a complete failure. Then putting them up against armed gladiators. But the fighters didn't like killing when the opponent doesn't fight back, so (laughs) now it's usually wild beasts or burning. There was a time when it would have been unthinkable to visit such a punishment on the citizen of Rome. But these people, by their very beliefs, make themselves unworthy of being Romans. Did you know they worship goats and fish? I've heard rumors to that effect. Their very existence is a threat to our state religion. There would certainly be plenty of room in paganism for another god, but they insist that their god is the only one. Well, I suppose you're right about the Christians, Calestus. You suppose I'm right? They're a threat to Rome itself. To my mind, there is no greater threat to Rome than Diocletian. He and his reforms, dividing the empire... It could be the ruination Genesius, of everything we... Mind your tongue. You say this to me. 
I'm the chief at this theater. I... I'm aware of that. I was speaking as a friend. After all, Genesius, we have been friends for a long time. I would hate to lose you now because of some chance remark, which at some passerby might sound like treason. You might do well to remember, you are not a politician, but an actor. And as such, have nothing to gain from having a political opinion. On the other hand, much might be lost if you... Oh, there. You too. A soldier at the top of the stairs. Praetorian guard, he must have heard. No, I, I don't think so. Uh, did you call? Come up here. He heard your... Is there uh, something you wanted of us? I am looking for the actor known as Genesius. <laughs> Don't you recognize him? This is the great Genesius. Is this true? It is true. What uh, business do you have with me? You are to accompany me. For what reason? Or uh, is a citizen still allowed to ask? Of course. You will accompany me because it is the will of the Emperor. What does the Emperor want with me? Well, perhaps you'd better take that up with him. You mean you're taking me to Diocletian? To the Emperor himself? Does it worry you, citizen? Well, uh, a little, yes. Well, if it's any comfort to you, a man of my rank is seldom sent to make arrests. My orders state that I'm merely to see you into his presence. In that case, lead on, Centurion. You appear somewhat ill at ease, Genesius. Well, I've never been in such an august presence before, my emperor. Oh. Uh, then you must look to Cletus here. Only a centurion, mind you. Not even a general. But always at ease. But then he has had long practice, haven't you, Cletus? I have, your imperial highness. One of my most trusted aides. Uh, but then we've always trusted the military. Uh, enough of that. Actor, we need your talents. My talents, my emperor? But you already have them. You mean the plays you do in the State Theatre? Of course, it's been a long time, but we seem to remember having seen one of those presentations. Which one, Your Imperial Highness? That is beside the point. We mention it only because we have heard reports that the arts seem to be failing Rome. Oh, <laughs> well, if I may assure you... One moment. This... One moment. We did not mean to cast any aspersions on the abilities of the players, Rather, at the plays themselves, we have heard they leave something to be desired in the way of entertainment. Is this true? Very true, Your Highness. Good. Good? We have a solution. You, actor Genesius, shall write a play. I, Your Highness? But I... I am no Seneca. You have eyes, you will have our support, and we have heard that you are not without humor. You want me to write a... Comedy, Your Highness? A very funny comedy, Genesius. Tell us, what thoughts do you entertain about the Christians? About the... the Christians? Oh, come, come. Surely you have some thoughts on the subject? Your Highness, I feel that a Rome under Diocletian has little to fear from them. Hector, be wise enough to avoid flattering me when I am looking for straight answers. Yes, Your Highness. Well, then... Well, I've heard that the Christians present a very real threat to the state religion. A very real threat. They scorn the household gods, even Jupiter himself. They refuse to admit the divinity of the emperor. They refuse to go to the games like other citizens. We've changed that for them, haven't we, Cletus? Indeed so, Your Highness. They go to the games now, but not as free citizens of Rome. Now they go as meat for the lions. Genesius, these Christians are the greatest threat this empire has ever known. They must be destroyed utterly. We must fight what they represent until even the memory of it is gone. And you must help us do it. But what can I do? A play. You will write a play. And this time the law will be enforced. Every Roman citizen will see it. If you have to have a thousand performances, you will write a comedy about the Christians. You will paint them as fools, as anything you like, so long as they are laughable. As you say, Your Highness. We have killed them by the thousands, Genesius. We have burned whole villages, threatened them with worse, but nothing works. Each week there are more than there were the week before. I think we have found the answer now. If we cannot kill them, we will laugh them out of existence. Do you understand? I, uh, I think so, Your Highness. 
But, uh, well, I know so little about them. So little? Your Highness, I could take him to the prisons. Let him meet some of them, talk to them. A thought, Cletus, a thought. What do you think of it? I believe the idea is sound, Your Highness. Good. Then you will begin in the morning. The interview has ended. These are your quarters? They are. I would think it belonged to a senator, at least. The state is not unkind to its artists. So tomorrow we go to the prisons. To the cells at the arena. That's where they keep most of the priests and the people from influential families. From influential families? Are there many? More than you might think. That's why they're kept at the arena. The emperor hopes that the sight of others dying might make those of influence change their minds. Do they? Some have. Not many. There must be more to this Christianity than meets the eye. There is. You'll find out during the coming days. Well, good night. Wait. Yes? Earlier, when you came to conduct me to the Emperor... You mean when you were talking to your friend on the stair? Then you did hear. I knew when you made the excuse for me before Diocletian. Tell me, why didn't you tell him what I said? My reason for that is private. Well, whatever it is, thank you. Don't thank me, either. The reason was also selfish. I'll probably tell you about it sometime. Until tomorrow, actor. Until tomorrow. Oh, uh, one other thing. Yes? From now on, it might be wise if you follow the advice your friend gave you. About political opinions? No. About minding your tongue. What do you know about them? Nothing. Or next to nothing. I've heard that they worship goats. Yes, I know that you've heard that. And I've heard that they sing on their way into the arena. Now, that happened only once in my memory. Sometimes they cry. Sometimes they scream. But they go. And the speaking of a single word would set them free. It is a most uncommon bravery they have. Here, down these steps. But why? What can this religion be to be great enough to give up everything for? face these lions for? You'll have to ask them. And after you've heard the answer, maybe you'll understand. If you have the gift these people call faith. I heard that all the cells of the arena were filled to overflowing. Yet this one is almost empty. A girl and an old man. These people the emperor considers dangerous. Well, they haven't noticed us yet. Tell them, tell me about them. I'll let them tell you about themselves. You have a visitor. Cletus. Cletus, I thought I... I was... have a friend of the Emperor with me. Oh? Bring him in. By all means, bring him in. Go on, Genesius. You... you two know each other? Your dealings are with the old man. He'll answer your questions. Of course. His beard makes it difficult, but I... I have the feeling I've seen this man before. You have seen him many times before. He was one of Rome's greatest generals. Proclus Gaius? Can this be? It can, and it is. May I present my daughter, Claudia? We are honored, Claudia. Our visitor is none other than the great Genesius. Of the theater? I, uh, I'm flattered that you should recognize me, General. But this must be some mistake, Cletus. Surely this man is no Christian? Oh, but I am. Perhaps now you can see why the Emperor considers him dangerous. If it were generally known that the esteemed Proclus is a Christian, you might imagine the effect... Especially upon the military. Indeed I can. I don't mean to seem inhospitable, but I am curious as to the nature of this visit. Well, I would learn something about this, uh, this religion of yours. The Emperor sends you potential converts, Father? It does seem a little strange, but then perhaps Cletus has an answer. Sir, the Emperor ordered me to let him talk to some of the condemned. I brought him to you because I thought you could give him a true picture. Diocletian has ordered him to write a play. A play? The kind of a play Judas might have written. Ah, I see. Well, Genesius, what would you like to know about Christianity? You will answer my questions then? Of course. All right. First, who was this Judas? 
<laughs> he knows the right questions. You underestimated this man, Cletus. Genesius, Judas was a betrayer. He it was who betrayed our master, Jesus Christ, the man who sold him to be crucified. My next question. Is Cletus one of you? I am. Ah, then now I know why you did not report my indiscretion to the emperor. Now if I report you, you can report me, an effective countermeasure. I am a soldier, and a soldier must have weapons. Do you intend to use this weapon to keep me from doing what the emperor has ordered me to do? Cletus is in a valuable position. He has been able to warn many who would otherwise be dead. He would be a fool to jeopardize that position. No. You have other questions, Genesius? General, I, I don't know enough about Christianity to ask questions. I've heard that you worship fish and goats. We worship fish and goats? Mm, that's what I've heard. That, of course, is ridiculous. I will tell you the whole story, but it might be wise to start by correcting your misconceptions. Uh, sit down, Genesius. I'm sorry I can't offer you a more comfortable seat than a straw-covered floor. Oh, that's all right. And now, about the fish. Merely a sign or a token we used to use to identify each other. Persecutions such as this are not new to us, you know. You say used to use? Now we use the cross. The cross? But a cross brings to mind, well, crucifixion. Jesus died on a cross. Now, about the goat. You, uh, you said a goat. Well, that's what I heard, General. That could be a distortion of fact by our enemies. You see, Jesus, the Son of God, came to us to die, to sacrifice himself so that we might gain eternal life. A lamb is symbolic of sacrifice, so sometimes we refer to Jesus as he referred to himself on a number of occasions as the Lamb of God. Now you say this, this Jesus was the son of God. He is. The emperor claims to be divine. The emperor is a fat old man, nothing more nor less. Well, then why do you believe one and not the other when they both make the same claim? There are a number of reasons I could give you 50. Give me one. Jesus Christ said he was the only son of God. He worked hundreds of miracles. He couldn't have worked them unless he was who he claimed he was. And he said he would rise from the dead. And three days after his crucifixion, he did. He what? Perhaps I had better start from the beginning, if you have enough time to listen. I have the time, and I have been ordered to listen. Fine, fine. Well, the story actually begins before the creation of the world. You see, Genesius, in the beginning, there was God. Uh, how are things progressing? Quite well, Your Highness. Uh, uh, I am making progress. We have it from Cletus that you spent all day, every day last week, talking to prisoners at the Colosseum. That's true, Your Highness. Trying to, to get the history of this, uh, this cult. I am going again today. Today? It, uh, it takes a great deal of information, Your Imperial Highness, to fill five acts. Get your information then, Genesius. But your play must be ready one month from today. One month, Your Highness? One month. And Genesius, it had better be very funny. Cletus, wait. Uh, I've been looking for you. I... I didn't think you'd need me today. Well, of course, I can't afford to dawdle now. Diocletian's given me only one month, no more. You know, I've been writing everything down. Have you? I do it at night after I get home. As much as I can remember of what Proclus tells me. And you know something? I think perhaps I can write a play which will do your religion as much good as it does harm. With Proclus' help, I'm sure I can do it. Let's go. I'd like to talk it over with him. To the arena? today. Well, why not? Haven't we been going to the arena all week? Yes, Genesius, but this is the day of the games. The day of the games? Proclus can give you no more help. Oh. Oh, no. I... I'll arrange for another instructor for you. 
perhaps tomorrow. And I'll pray, Genesius, that when your month is up, you'll be ready. Any sign yet? Any sign? None that I can see. Oh, Genesius, I have never seen such an audience. The guard will come in first. The men will take their stations. Then the emperor. There are no guards, not yet. It is past the hour. Wait, what, what's that? Where? There. The Praetorian Guard is coming in. Oh, yes. In a few moments, Diocletian will follow. Come, I have some last-minute changes to make. Changes? Are you mad? Come, come. I've forgotten everything. Yeah, everything. The emperor himself is on here. Quiet. <laughs> Quiet, please. You have all learned to play in five acts. You have done this in a remarkable time. And for this, I am grateful. No I, hate to ask to do it again. I am going to say something now, and I, I want no arguments. In fact, I do not even want to hear any comments about it, because there isn't any time. You will do only three of those acts. The final two have been so revised that I must do them myself. That's all I have to say. You may get back to your preparations. Genesius. Oh, Cletus, I didn't expect to see you. Come with me quickly. What's the matter? Come. I don't want to be overheard. What is it? You have an ambitious man in your company, a man named Calextus? Why, yes. He, he was with me that night six weeks ago when you first took me to the Emperor. Why? What have you planned for the last two acts of your play? Nothing that would harm what you believe in, Cletus. What I believe in? All right, what we believe in. Why do you ask? The man Calextus claims to have a copy of what you intend to say in your last two acts. He says he has it in your own hand and that it is treasonous. How do you know this? He came to see the Emperor. I'm having him detained, but I don't know how long I can keep him detained. Oh, I see. I am a centurion in the guard, but I don't command it. What are you going to do? There is only one thing left for me to do. Tibba. Yes, Genesis. Some weeks ago, and they took your husband away. You drank too much, and I scolded you. I'm sorry. I, I ask your forgiveness. You... You have it, Genesius. Thank you. I know they killed him because he was a Christian. If you are a Christian, too... If I... If you are a, a Christian, too... Pray for me. Goodbye, Tibber. What a strange thing to say. Not really strange. He's going out onto the stage alone. What do you suppose he's going to do? I know what he's going to do. What? The fourth act. People of Rome! People of Rome! And Emperor of Rome! <coughs> Many of you know me. For those who don't, my name is Genesius, and I'm an actor. You have been ordered here for your own good. I know this to be true. For some weeks ago, our gracious emperor, Diocletian, asked me to write a play that you might know the truth about the Christians. And he sent me out to study them so that I might know the truth. This is the result of my findings. These Christians are a peculiar lot. If you ask them, they will tell you that the state religion of Rome is false and that there is only one God. That his son came to earth, founded their religion, that he gave his life so that each man, woman and child in this world might have a share in eternal life. Further, these Christians will tell you that this son of God who was himself God, said that he would rise again on the third day, that he was crucified and did rise again on the third day. Now some of our greatest men have listened to these sayings and have believed them. The trusted and beloved General Proclus, Marcus Antonius, former senators Marcellus, Cassius, and 20 others whose names are known to you. 
They believed these followers of Jesus, and I'll tell you why. I can tell you better than they, for I am still alive. They believed because it was the truth. The things that Jesus taught are true. Stop him! Soldiers, stop that man! Stop him! On the stage before the audience, Genesius, the actor, by order of the Emperor Diocletian, was beheaded for his faith and thus stepped from his stage before the people of Rome into eternal life and the presence of God. This is Billy Burke again. We of the theater are extremely proud of our Genesius and of other figures like him, not all of whom indeed suffered martyrdom for their beliefs, as he did, but who have through the ages lived up to the splendid traditions of noble aspirations, of generosity, and in many more cases than the public may be aware of, of tender and devoted family life. Genesius was a hero and our inspiration. In our own more humble and much smaller way, we are privileged to follow in his footsteps. Genesius, the careless man, vain perhaps at first, yet who rose grandly to the occasion and played his part to the end. Genesius, the man of prayer, without which he would never have had the courage or the grace to defy imperial custom and unjust law to his death. And so Family Theatre tonight reiterates its message that prayer is the mighty solvent, the true communication medium between God and man, and that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed the fourth act Starring Stephen McNally, Billy Burke was your hostess. Others in our cast were Frank Gerstel, Edgar Berrier, John Stevenson, Alice Backus, and Herb Butterfield. The script was written for Family Theater by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan and directed by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Henry Mancini. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to join us again next week when family theater will present Flight Plan, starring Nancy Gates. Scott Brady will be your host. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.